So OpenAI finally dropped their AI powered web browser and they're calling it ChatGPT Atlas. This isn't just a new app, it's a full browser built around ChatGPT itself. Basically, your tabs, search engine, and AI assistant are all in one place. They announced it today in a live stream and showed off some of its wild new capabilities, which we'll be breaking down. And then we'll actually be testing it out ourselves, so make sure to stick around until the end. Alright, so the best way to explain what this is, is honestly just to show you. We all know what a browser is, Safari, Chrome, whatever. And this is basically just that, but with ChatGPT built into it. Take a look. I'm going to search for this movie I want to see. Um, and we've made some major upgrades to search on ChatGPT when accessed via Atlas. So we know that um, search is kind of one of the core flows in a browser for navigating the internet. And a lot of these searches can be very keyword based or short. Um, and LLMs traditionally struggle with that where they don't have enough context to provide a great answer. So one of the first things you'll notice is anytime you uh, search within Atlas, you get these tabs across the top. You can quickly pivot your experience into something more like a traditional search engine with images, videos, or news stories, all without losing that core chat experience on the home tab. So here, Scroll down, some nice images, a few uh, updates on what this is. Let's see if we can find a link. I'll take this Roger Ebert review. It's given it four stars. One really interesting thing here is that whenever you click a link from a search result in Atlas, by default, it's gonna slide chat over and open the web in a split view. Now, if you don't want that, you can always command click the link or just click the Ask Chat GPT button and close it. But it has this kind of nice property of you have a companion with you as you search the internet. So maybe I want to go to a different review here. I'll try this Yahoo one. Haven't you already seen this movie? What's with your review? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it twice, actually. Uh, <laughs> I recommend it. Um, really, really good, actually. Um, let's just ask for a quick summary of this review. Can you summarize this review in five words or less? Maybe we can get to the meat of it. This is where I think this, this new model of search is actually really powerful because it makes it, it's like a multi-turn experience. Like you can just have this back and forth with your search results rather than just being sent off to a web page. You can use this to really understand. Totally. Yeah, yeah that's a great review. Huh. PTA is best. All right, I have to check it out. That's a high bar. Uh, <laughs> definitely go. It, it honestly is great. Um, <laughs> okay. So yeah, again, it's basically just like browsing the web, except now you've got ChatGPT by your side. In this demo, they showed how it can summarize information on the fly and how it presents it in a more readable, easy to understand way while still giving you access to the full source. I think using it to look up movies like this is kind of perfect. Normally, I just Google the title, check the Rotten Tomato score, and maybe skim a few descriptions. But if I can get summarized insights from multiple sources in about the same amount of time, then that seems actually pretty useful. Then, in another demo, they show how Atlas can literally polish your writing in any text box. In this example, they're inside Gmail, and ChatGPT rewrites an email directly inside the Compose window. But what's cool is that it can do this in any text box across the web, and it actually learns your writing style over time, just like regular ChatGPT. Again, this is basically ChatGPT, but living inside your browser. It still has memory, it knows things about you, it can reference your past chats, and it uses all that context to be way more helpful as you browse. Now, another great use case for this is shopping. I don't really shop online much, especially for groceries, but I can definitely see how this could be a game changer for a lot of people. Like, say you come across a cool shirt on social media or a delicious looking recipe you want to try, you can just pop up ChatGPT Atlas and ask it to find it and buy it for you. Check this out. So here we have a recipe where uh, we're planning a potluck. Right? Yeah, really excited about this recipe. Yeah, and so I'd like to show you how we can use Agent for things in, in, in your personal life. So one thing that I always struggle with with recipes is figuring out what ingredients I need to buy, right? Uh, it's somewhere in the recipe page, it's some yeah. serving size, I need to figure it all out. So I, I like to use Atlas to ask ChatGPT, uh, what ingredients do I need to buy to cook, do I need to cook this for eight people? 
And <clears throat> ChatGPT is going to go ahead and read the web page, figure out the ingredients, kind of do some math for me, and tell me exactly what I need. So useful. Yeah, in the past I've told yeah. it that I like, my, uh, I like my shopping list organized by grocery aisle to make it uh, a little easier to shop for. And looking at this, you know, I have most of this, honestly. I just need the meat and the produce. So I'm going to say, uh, can you order the meat and produce for me? And we'll shut off how you can start agent mode by clicking a button, right? which is really useful if you know to reach for it. Uh, but in those moments that you don't, ChatGPT can figure out that the way to accomplish this is to take over your browser. right? Uh, you're always in control. You always have the option to approve or reject it. So I'm just going to click Continue uh, to hand, hand the task off to Agent. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I love how collaborative Agent is in Atlas. So you can just hand off your tabs. You can go back and forth. And we've really improved Agent a bunch to make sure that it's a lot better and faster at these collaborative tasks. And as you can notice, like at any moment in time, you could take control. And so one thing that's really great about this is like Agent already knows that Justin likes to shop at Safeway on Instacart. And so it knows exactly where to go when all he said was, can you order this for me? And so it's found its way over to Instacart. And it's starting to search. You can see how it like types way faster than yeah. I do. <laughs> um, and yeah, I pride myself on my typing speed, and this is just blowing me fast. out of the water. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> exactly, and it started adding items to the cart already. So this isn't exactly a brand new concept, but now it's finally accessible to everyone. Well, everyone who has a Mac and a ChatGPT account. And on that note, I am one of those people. So let's fire it up and try it out. All right, so I just downloaded ChatGPT Atlas. I've connected it with Safari because that's the browser I use the most. And I also had to give it full access to my disk. So it has all my data now and let's try it out. All right, so I just started getting back on the ice after a couple of years of not playing hockey and I realized my gloves have a huge hole in them. So I think it's time to get some new gloves and what better gloves to get than the ones my favorite player has. Now, I can maybe just figure out on my own what gloves he wears by either searching up the brand or making a couple more Google searches. But instead, what I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT Atlas. So I'm going to go to this plus here and click the agent mode. I'm then going to ask ChatGPT Atlas, what gloves does Connor McDavid wear and can you buy them for me? Okay, so as I clicked enter, this thing actually popped up here. Agent mode may introduce risk. And then it shows me that there's a logged in mode. In logged in mode, ChatGPT can access your logged in sites, making it faster to complete tasks. Or in logged out mode, to have agent mode use sites without being logged in as you. So I'm going to go ahead and click start logging in. So it's starting to find which gloves Connor McDavid wears. It's applying the response. It's now searching the web completely autonomously, doing actually multiple searches simultaneously. I can still ask follow-up questions. I can take control at any time. It's even looking at websites based on my location, which is pretty interesting. And here we go. It found me some gloves. It actually found me gloves that are on sale. I believe these are the ones that he does wear. It's adding them to the bag. Let's see how far it takes this. So it seems to be stuck in a loop right now. It just keeps clicking the size and then add to bag, but add to bag is not working because I guess I'm not logged into CCM. Let's see, troubleshooting site. Oh, here we go. It's opening multiple web pages. So there we go. It actually found me the gloves. It only took a few minutes and now it asked me if I want to check out. So I'm probably actually going to go ahead and do that, but let's test something else out. All right, so in this other test, I'm actually going to open up Twitter. So I want to see if ChatGPT can actually write a tweet for me. Since we're currently testing out ChatGPT Alice, I guess we can just let our followers know. Can you post a tweet letting my followers know that I'm testing out ChatGPT Atlas and how it's going? Let's see what it does. Okay, so it just gave me a draft. Um, but can it actually do it? Let's see, let's go to agent mode. Can you actually post the tweet though? Okay, so it's getting started. I honestly like this, this kind of animation here, I guess, um, that shows you that the agent is in progress. That's super helpful. And 
There we go. Your tweet draft is ready and waiting on X. Would you like me to click post? So I actually like that it finishes the tweet and then before it actually posts it, it asks you. So let's see, uh, I guess this tweet is fine. Feels like the internet just got an upgrade. Sure, let's go ahead and instead of me posting it, let's tell it to post it. Yes, go ahead and post it, please. So there you go. It actually went ahead and posted the tweet. If you want to check just to make sure, you can go check out my Twitter account, AI Copium. Also, feel free to drop a follow while you're there. But seriously, this is actually pretty insane. I mean, I know we didn't do anything too crazy right now, but you can see how useful this could be. I mean, again, it's literally like having ChatGPT by your side while you browse the web or social media. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of Atlas and of AI browsers in general. It really does feel like this could be the new way we interact with the web and maybe even social media, but it's still early days. It's gonna take time for this to catch on. Although, honestly, traditional web browsing has already been slowly dying because of AI, so maybe not. But what do you guys think? Is this the future of the internet or just Google search on steroids? Either way, this is a big move from OpenAI and it'll be interesting to see how Google responds. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, please feel free to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.